There's not as much long speed to Sammy as there was when he was in Buffalo. It's likely that injuries have sapped some of that from him, but he's still got some burst and explosion, especially in the short areas, to his game. And with that, he's learned to become more physical as a route runner. It is worth pointing out, however, that he is only one season removed from doing this in the Super Bowl. It's a critical moment late in the fourth quarter. Here's Sammy lined up against Richard Sherman 1v1, and he beats him for a massive play. Sherman's in press and the 49ers are sending a blitz, so Watkins knows he has to win quickly. He uses these quick little steps off the line as he's slow playing upfield, which gets Sherman to take a bit of a full step, which allows him to close the space. And he brutally makes Sherman pay for it with this hard jab. He gets Sherman to open his hips and Sammy fires back inside. Sherman's able to get his hand into Sammy's chest to give him a chance to recover, but crucially, Sammy's able to fight through that contact and he bursts upfield, stacks, and now Mahomes, look at all this space that he has to throw into, and just lets Sammy run under it for the 40-yard play. And this is unlike every Ravens wide receiver not named Hollywood the last two years. Sammy showed up in a big spot, beat man coverage, and beat contact in his route. And Sammy adds that ability to this wide receiver core. The ability to get open, even if corners are being physical with him through the route. He may have lost some speed since 2015 when he played under Greg Roman with the Bills, but he's adjusted his game to be able to win with physicality. Notably under the tutelage of new Ravens route guru, Keith Dub Williams, this play from 2020 is reminiscent of the Super Bowl play I just showed you. Here he is isolated 1v1 in a press man type look, but this time he's going to fake in to go out. We see this quick foot fire and slow play again to allow him to close the distance. And this time he fires inside and the defender opens up his hips for the jab back out. But the corner gets really physical with him to disrupt. But watch Sammy use his outside hand to unceremoniously throw the defender off him and swim with the inside hand to get clean. And now the defender's in trouble and again Sammy stacked him. It would be a tough throw to make but I'm not sure why Mahomes pulls the ball back down here. And you see that type of physicality to cross the face of physical corners on repeat all over his tape. Whether it's going into out or out to in, doesn't matter. Here's Sammy. He drives hard inside. I think he's trying to create a natural pick that the defender avoids well. But again, at the break, he's throwing the defender off him after they make contact. And he gets open. This time at the goal line. He uses this little crossover jump type setup for his initial release, which is actually very reminiscent of Devontae Adams, who, by the way, also refined his route running and release work with Keith Dub Williams. Again, he's almost inviting the contact inside, and this time he chops with his inside hand to break the corner's jam and gets outside, but Mahomes is able to run it in instead. In the middle of this bunch, stemming inside, again, allowing this contact by the corners early in order to separate at the break. This time it looks like he grabs the wrist and rips as he breaks and he's open again. This one was another massive play in the Chiefs Super Bowl run, this time in the AFC Championship game. And he meets force with force and the defender's not expecting it. But importantly, not only does he win this physical battle, he doesn't let the defender pull him down either for the PI. And once he's in space, he adjusts his route into the deep and scores the 60 yard touchdown bomb. Here's Sammy again, and this looks like some sort of RPO slant, which obviously is very translatable into the Ravens' offense. And this time, Sammy initiates the contact, gets the push to create some distance, and then breaks inside immediately. The ball's away from him, but you'd still like to see him come down with this. And there are a couple of incompletions and even some drops on his 2020 tape. Not enough for me to be concerned necessarily, but certainly enough for me to notice. Just worth noting. I love his physicality in his route running. It's a great detox from the lack of physicality that Miles Boykin shows, despite the fact that Boykin is 3 inches taller and 10 pounds heavier. But that's not to say that Watkins isn't dynamic anymore. I already showed you the Super Bowl clip versus Sherman. He's not reliant solely on that physicality to get open. But here, watch him get on the corner's toes and really challenge him and threaten him enough with his quickness that the corner has to speed turn and completely give up his back. That doesn't happen if Sammy's quickness and athleticism doesn't rush him.
here again, this foot fire to close the gap to the corner. And he's stepping on the corner's toes again at the top of this route and creates tons of space at the break. I really love what he does at the top of this route. He chops his feet to eat up the cushion. And then when he's on top of the corner, he throws in this small jab to threaten outside, which the corner reacts to. Watch the corner's hands come up and away from his body like he's falling, but throws in one more step to threaten back outside again just to toy with the corner before finally breaking inside, and he's wide open. I mean, it's easier at full speed to see just how he's toying with the corner. I love that he gets the corner to bite, not once, but twice on his fakes on this route. He's running routes with purpose and savvy, he's running routes with physicality, and he's running routes with a plan. And you see that route running nuance and prowess on routes where he probably doesn't even need to be doing as much as he's doing. He's going to run this deep over route versus this corner who's playing with outside leverage and just giving up the inside. And unless this corner is an amazing athlete, he's already got no chance versus this route just because of the play call. But Sammy's not taking any risks, rather than just sprinting in a straight line. He bursts inside but pushes upfield to get the corner to carry him vertically, which allows him to stack him for the over route when he breaks shallowly. By stemming more vertically and pushing upfield, he's able to create even more separation. He's not a major threat after the catch, but here he is running this drag route. And watch him transition into a runner and burst downfield. There's still some notable explosion to his game. And because it's important to the Ravens, Here's Sammy as a blocker. He gets himself outside with his release, then engages, gets two hands into the chest and drives the defender downfield nearly 20 yards from the line of scrimmage. I love the way he works his way to the outside shoulder to get leverage and works downfield. He will be asked to do this just like Boykin was and it's plays like this that make it less likely that Boykin sees the field, which given Boykin's lack of development as a receiver outside of the red zone, is probably a good thing. This time out of the slot, getting in front of this screen on third and one, and driving this defensive back into the other defensive back to create a lane for Kelsey to get the yard they need, and much more. I haven't clipped them, but the Chiefs occasionally use Sammy in motion pre-snap as an add-one type blocker, in a very similar way to how the Ravens use Willie Sneed as part of their running game in 2019 and 2020. My guess is his role in this offense will take on parts of both Sneed and Boykin's roles in the scheme. That actually creates some nice flexibility because Sneed wasn't playing much outside and Boykin wasn't playing much inside. On a fundamental level though, the Ravens just needed to add wide receivers this offseason who could win 1v1 matchups in man coverage. The biggest flaw of this receiving core the last two or three years has been the inability to step up to the challenge in big moments and win those 1v1 matchups versus man. And Sammy wins versus man coverage. I'd still love to add another receiver in the draft, hopefully with a fairly high pick if possible too. I do worry that a really good one might not make it to 58 based on how my board's stacked this year. But I'm just hoping we can continue to add some talent, young talent, to this receiving core. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Please do leave a like and comment. It helps other people find the channel, I've been told.